describe in bullet point form what this image is. So what I'm demonstrating here is the new lava model. Now, the thing that's pretty exciting with this lava model is you're able to run this all locally. I'll run through a few different examples just to show you how this model works. One of the more common requests that you can send in with the model is something like describe this image for me. That's probably a pretty safe bet for most of the queries that you're gonna be passing in. And in this case, you see that I passed in that photo of Queen Elizabeth. And you see that the model responded back with this image features a black and white illustration of Queen Elizabeth II. The queen is depicted with her iconic crown, smiling slightly as she gazes to the side. This is pretty remarkable that now we can run these multimodal models straight on the hardware of our devices. I'm running this on a newer MacBook, but I did test this exact same model on a laptop that's about four years old, and I did have pretty good results. It did take a little bit longer to process, but it was still able to run without an issue. So the next picture I'm gonna send in is one with text. So I'll say, describe this image in bullet point form. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over into my terminal and run this. And this is an image of a blog post from OpenAI. It's responding back with, this image appears to be a screenshot of web page, specifically showcasing the design for a new feature of an application or a service. Here are the details visible in the image. The web page has a clean modern layout with a light color palette, a prominent image depicting memory and representation on how users can interact with ChatGPT, highlighting features like memory control and more. There's a list to the right hand side of the page under a heading, new controls for ChatGPT. The item lists are not fully visible due to the image resolution and size. So if I just pull up the image here, that's the response back that I got from this image. What's great with this model is you can use this to run inference locally for free. Everything that I'm using here is completely free. The model is free, Olama is free. And, and if you wanted to play this to a server, you could also do this as well. The thing with Olama, which is really interesting, is it's a couple former Docker employees. And what they're really looking to do is to sort of Dockerize these LLMs and make it really simple to spin these up locally on our machine or on cloud hardware and be able to easily interact with these models on a simple server. Just to dive into the model a little bit, this is a multi mi system. Lava integrates advanced natural language processing with computer vision capabilities to understand and process both text and visual data seamlessly at the same time. So if you're looking for more information, there is this paper which I'll link in the description of the video, along with all of the other websites that I'm gonna be showing you. Now, this is obviously cutting edge technology and it utilizes the latest advancements in deep learning, such as transformer models for language and convolutional neural network. So the way that this works is both through the advancements that we've seen in deep learning, such as the transformer models that are used in ChatGPT, and it also uses convolutional neural networks for the vision tasks. Now, what's great with this model is it's really designed to handle large scale application data and complex queries. I sent in a number of different images and it was able to respond back with reasonable responses for all of them. We're just sort of at the ground floor for these multimodal models. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see the landscape of different models and architecture over the coming weeks and months. Having access to these multimodal models are going to be a huge unlock for being able to build different applications. And overall, it's just a really neat feature, right? So over the past year, we've seen countless different examples of numerous chatbots that companies have developed since ChatGPT really made the splash onto the scene. We started to see these impressive versions of these multimodal capabilities. And it really wasn't that long ago where we just began to have access to these multimodal models. You're able to access through the ChatGPT4 Vision API if you want a paid solution, be able to pass in an image, and it do something similar for you. Now, it goes without saying that the performance of this model isn't quite as high as something like ChatGPT4. From what I've read, it does outperform it on certain tasks, which I'll allow you to dive into if you'd like. Another great thing with this model is it does have an Apache 2 license, so you are gonna be able to use this broadly. So if you're looking for more information on the model, I'll point you to the GitHub. There's also a ton of different information on Hugging Face where you can go and check out models on Hugging Face. Also another great place where you can go and check out some more information on this model. Just to show you some of the results of the model itself. There's two different sizes of these lava models. There's a 13B variant as well as a 34B variant. If we look across a number of different metrics, you see that there are some benchmarks where it does outperform both a Gemini Pro as well as GPT-4 Vision. It's great that we now have these open source models that are creeping up to the capabilities of these closed source models.
there are some good examples on the results from the model here. Here's an example of passing in this picture of Mark Zuckerberg and the response back that we get from the model. What I found interesting with this query is you're passing in a question where I need to pick up my wife. I live in San Jose. What time should I leave? And you pass in just the image of the flight information. And it says, based on this information provided in the image, the flight is scheduled to arrive at 11.51 a.m. at San Francisco International Airport. If you live in San Jose, you should consider the travel time between San Jose and San Francisco, which is approximately 45 to 60 minutes, depending on traffic conditions. And it continues on from there. So really remarkable, right? The fact that you could just take a picture of something on screen and be able to send in a query quickly I think this type of thing is going to be more and more familiar. We're starting to see these different devices pop up, whether it's glasses or the Vision Pro or the Rabbit R1 device, where you're going to be able to take a picture of something and quickly get a response back. It's going to be a really exciting time for developers to integrate these things into a variety of applications. I know for myself, if I can just pick up my phone and just ask a question of what it is and get a response back almost in real time, that's going to be a thing that I think a lot of people are going to love. The absolute easiest way to get started with this is on Perplexity Labs. You can head over to labs.perplexity.ai, go to their drop down in the bottom right hand corner. There's a ton of different models that you can play around with. So you can play around with the Mistral models or the new Gemma models from Google. But if you want to play around with these two lava models, you can go ahead, select the model, and then upload your photo here. The thing with Perplexity Labs is it does have really good inference. Say if you don't have a fast computer, but you do want to have some good performance, you can go ahead and just pass in your image, the Queen Elizabeth photo here, and we see that the tokens per second is over 200. Now, with that being said, I think what most people are going to want to do with this model is try it out locally just to see how it performs on your hardware. Olama is a great option for running these models locally on your machine. Simply install it like you would a simple program, and then you can check out the different models on the website. If we scroll down and select Lava. To install it is you'll have to Olama run Lava. If it's the first time, it's going to go ahead and pull down that model. It's going to be several gigabytes in size. It's going to take a little bit of time depending on your internet connection. Just like you saw on the outset of the video, you can pass in the text asking a question of what the image is, and then you can just drag over the image. You always type in the path to the image, but I found dragging the image from the finder to be an easier experience with interacting with this. Now, the other thing with this is if you haven't used Olama before, it sets up a local inference server. So if you're developing a desktop application, or if you want to have different tooling on your desktop, or maybe it takes a screenshot and you want to ask a question, and then you pass it in and you just simply ask, Something like, I'm stuck here, help me figure out what to do here, or what is this? So you can imagine all of the different use cases where you can interact with this. The other thing with Olama is you can deploy it to cloud hardware. So if you want to deploy it on something like AWS or GCP or Azure or what have you. And I was playing around with Olama recently where I put an Edgrog proxy server in front of my Olama server and I was able to access it from anywhere. So I set up a simple Next.js application from my phone. I was able to query the different models and get responses back from my MacBook even though I'm miles away on my cell phone. You could access this anywhere in the world. So you just put in that URL and then you're able to interact with it. There's a ton of different ways on how you can interact with these models. Lava could be another extension of that application. Imagine you're out and about and you want to take a picture of something, but you don't have access to something like ChatGPT Plus or Perplexity. and You just want to pass that into your computer running the Lava model locally. You could do that by simply setting up a simple app to do so a ton of different use cases for stuff like this. I just wanted to show you that there is an integration in Langchain for Olama. So if you've built in Langchain before, that's an option for you. There's also an option within Llama Index to use, and you're able to easily use these multimodal capabilities straight within Langchain. So you see the example here where it's just reading a file of something like hot dog, then it's going to pass the image in as base 64. And from there you can pass in your query as well. I just wanted to do a really quick demonstration of Lava, point you in the direction of it, encourage you to check it out. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until the next one.